Hey everybody, let's talk about um, the lab this week. This week we're exploring the, or beginning to explore some of the issues related to COVID. In lecture this week, we spoke of a uh, general introduction to coastal stressors, and we talked about um, the challenges of institutions responding to those stressors. Well, you, you'd be hard picked to find a more global um, challenging stressor um, in recent months than our unfolding COVID-19 pandemic. And so we're going to look at this. We're going to use this as, as a lens to explore how different coastal managers responded to uh, stress. And did they get do a good job? Did they respond similarly, et cetera? So we're going to begin um, the exploration this week, and this is going to continue into a future lab. This week's lab is just built around the data collection of, um, of that. Um, so uh, when this happened, if we step back, uh, uh, you know, a year and a half, um, just to bring everybody along in the same place, um, mid-2019, we think sometime, um, we had the emergence of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19 disease. Um, that virus uh, uh, emerged. Um, the talk was that this emerged in the so-called wet market in Wuhan, China. Um, the data are pretty clear now that it, it didn't start there. That was a, one of the first uh, most conspicuous outbreaks of it, but it probably started somewhere else. Someone was infected and then went to that market, um, and, then, and then the spread began. Um, it, did, it started to spread. We had our first case in the U.S., and in, in, we now know in November of 2019, but it really started spreading more closer to the holiday season, Christmas, New Year's. Um, so by early January, it was already burning through, um, it was beginning to burn through parts of the U.S. and the rest of the world outside of China. It, it had well escaped China at that point. Um, we uh, come, don't really grapple with it too well until about late February, and the federal government is very slow to respond and, and all this and that. Um, we start in places like California, we start to respond intensely with homestay and social distancing measures in uh, early March to mid-March. Los Angeles, California is one of the first um, most aggressive places to respond by saying it's pretty much everybody, hey, stay at home, don't go to school, don't go to work. Um, but then within that area, we have different, um, a, a, a different responses across the state. Los Angeles County um, has one of the most aggressive responses. They essentially first say, hey, everybody stay home. And then when people started going out to Griff Park and places like that, um, where uh, people were um, seen and, and their images were captured in local media, et cetera, uh, not spacing out six feet uh, from one another, um, you know, that led San Diego, uh, that led Los Angeles to say, hey, we need to um, be more aggressive. And so then we started restricting activities in public spaces, open spaces. In the context of coastal management, we're going to be looking at what happened with the beach, the immediate coastal fringe. So initially we said, hey, um, don't go, you can't park. We shut down parking. Then we shut down amenities. Then we shut down the access to the sand, the so-called towel area of the beach, the main beach face sand plain of the beach. Um, and then we even shut down uh, access to the water, to surfing and swimming and the like. So Los Angeles had, if not the most aggressive um, uh, rest uh, restrictions on beach going and coastal access, um, we were at least uh, you know right up there it tied for the most restrictive. Um, now, we have different responses. Calif California goes this way. Los Angeles goes this way. Um, um, counties in Florida, counties in North Carolina, counties in, Los An in uh, Alaska, et cetera, behaved differently. And so we want to get a sense of that. We want to look at, hey, what happened? How did we respond to this stressor? And, um, and, and did it work? And, and did people respond? Uh, uh, so on and so forth. So we began this effort um, last uh, uh, many months ago. So last spring, we started collecting this data with a group of students. We have 255 um, uh, oceanic coastal counties. Remember, we talked about the fact that we have coastal counties that, coastal areas that touch um, the Great Lakes or that touch saltwater. For this activity, we're just going to focus on the saltwater ones, ignore the Great Lakes, 255. We reached out to a whole variety of those uh, counties, and we got um, something like uh, 80, 90 odd um, counties to respond and give us data. So that's great. But it's not 
universal. And we had some states we did really well in, other states we had very poor participation. And so for the purposes of our lab here today, where we'd like to get a sense of how people responded across the country, we want representation across the different region, well representation, good representation across all these different regions, we need a bit more data. And so that's what we're gonna be doing um, with this lab. We're gonna be collecting, filling in some of the holes of that original data collection event. Now for this, um, you do not need, uh, we technically speaking don't need human subjects, don't need IRB approval, but we have that. We, we, we secured it. You all have done your CITI training and your, and your human subjects training. So while we're talking to government officials and asking um, for data on the, the goings on of government, which you do not need um, permission to do, that's, that's the basic function of a democracy, um, we nevertheless have gone ahead and gotten all those um, uh, permissions, crossed all those T's, dotted all those I's, um, just so that we're, we're fully in compliance. But note that if you wanted to do such a project and you were uh, calling up your local government agencies, you do not need um, uh, human subjects uh, approval per se. Also, I want you to do, uh, before we get into this, before you get into the, to the lab, please watch these handful of videos I have here. These are just a subset of some of the ones I made. These are a compilation of, of news coverage of going to the beach and the coronavirus and um, uh, uh, different time steps from uh, mid-March uh, onward um, to refresh you, to refresh your memory as to what was going on, how scary it was, the people's, uh, general people's attitudes, the regulators' attitudes, et cetera. So do watch these videos, uh, please, when you have a moment. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to go and we're going to uh, reach out to folks. So um, we, have a, we have several different uh, links here. We have this uh, Google spreadsheet, which we'll look at in a second. This uh, uh, articulates your targets, uh, tells you where to go do your surveys. And then um, for the collection of the surveys, we have the surveys in one of two forms. We have a phone-based interview where you would call up a county in, in Louisiana or parish in Louisiana or, or county in Florida or whatever it is, and you would ask to talk to uh, someone who is, you know, somebody for the, the Coastal Management Agency. It could be Parks and Rec. It could be Beaches and Harbors. It could be, it could be whatever. Um, you'll get in touch with that, that, that person, talk to him or her and say, hey, can I just uh, talk to you real quick? We have about a 10-minute survey. This is part of a national effort to look at um, what happened with COVID and how different agencies responded. Um, so if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions. And you can go ahead, click this link. You'll be taken to the Qualtrics survey, and you can fill it out as you're talking to the person on the phone. We have some prompts there. So if you want to follow the script, you can also download this link right here. This is the, this is the, um, the script. Um, if I click that and we take a look at it, uh, it, it it'll, it'll say, um, uh, you know, it'll, it'll prompt you. Hey, so this is, hey, this is who I am talking to you doing this project, blah, blah, blah. The blue is, is some trans transition text. You don't have to use that exact language, but, but we found this to be helpful. Um, and so you can go ahead and walk folks through this. Now you can, you can do this using the, um, uh, printed data sheet. If you want to print out the phone survey, it's right here, All right? It's right here. Um, so you can go ahead and, and do that, um, or you can just go ahead and you know transcribe it with pen and paper, and then and then as soon as you're done, type it into Qualtrics, or you can go ahead and uh, type it directly into Qual Qualtrics as you're talking to the person, whatever works well for your workflow. Um, so uh, yeah, so that would be the ideal. The ideal thing would be to go ahead and do it with on the speaking to them on the phone. That way, if there's some challenges or there's some questions, you can go ahead and answer them and you can uh, uh, get people, keep people moving on responding to the survey. Alternatively, you could um, uh, send them the survey in email form. Uh, again, we're giving you, uh, uh, so it's a very similar survey, just slightly different. Obviously, you're not going to be putting your name in because you're not typing the data. Um, but uh, we have uh, here uh, examples of the text for you to fill out, um, to go into the body of your um, body of your email. Again, you don't have to use this, but this is this is just you know to save you some work and and help you streamline the process. Um, regardless uh, whether you use the um, phone based uh, interview or the email based interview, we want to make sure we get um, uh, responses. How am I going to know which responses? You can go ahead and look here at our targets. If I click this link, this is going to take you to the Google Doc, the shared Google Doc, and I have everybody's name up here. 
right? So Alejandro, Alex, Allison, etc. And um, uh, this is your um, and and the enumerator was the original enumerator, the person that first uh, uh, worked on this in the in the spring. Um, but here we go. Uh, so region is is where the, you know the general area of it is, what state it's in, and then what county we're in. Now have a note: most of these are counties. But we do have some fun funky things. So if we're in Louisiana, they're called parishes. If we're in um, uh, places like Alaska, let's make this a little bit larger so we can see this. If we're in Alaska, sometimes we have census areas as opposed to counties. And then some of our East Coast, especially uh, uh, older um, uh, New England-y kind of areas of the East Coast, we sometimes have cities having jurisdiction over the beach, specifically in the counties, rather than wrapping around the cities, the counties are... In some cases, the areas outside of the city jurisdiction. And so um, when we pull all these different units together, um, I'm collectively referring to these as counties, but some of them do have slightly different names. Um, so if we keep looking over here, what we find is this column here, and this is the one you're going to want to fill out. So once you get a survey completed, come back here, uh, you know, select the cell and say uh, completed over the phone on October 1 or something of that nature. Uh, what you'll see here is you see over here to this side, let me make this guy a little bit smaller. Um, what you'll see here is uh, we have um, con some, some, of our, some of our areas already have contacts. Here's a person of contact, Rebecca Woods. She's the executive director of what in this area is known as the Environmental Control Board, uh, so on and so forth, email, phone, et cetera. Um, in some cases, that person didn't work or, or they said that they, that wasn't their responsibility. So we found a secondary person to reach out to, which is here represented in this, in this orange. And then in some cases, a, a, a third or tertiary contact that's represented in this, um, I don't know what this is, sort of, sort of more orangey uh, color. So first thing, when you, when, you, when you look at up your six, and I also should say that I, I, I randomly spread these out. So everybody has a mix. So some people have relatively big states, relatively small states, all over the place. So um, so these are your assigned ones. Now you have six. I would love for you each to do six, but you're only required to get two folks' responses. If you get more than six, I'd love it. Please include it. Um, but if you get your two, you can go ahead and, and stop on your outreach. Um, but we do want to know who you did reach out to. So over here on the right, you'll see there's, there's the same information for coastal, initial, coastal, secondary outreach, coastal third outreach. And so please do fill this out. This could be as simple as copying the stuff from the initial and paste it into the, uh, from the spring initial and paste it into the coastal initial. If you're using those points of contact, you might create, you might need to go and, 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 and hunt around and find your, uh, out, your, your contacts um, on your own. So we'd like to have those here though, just so for, for good um, quality control purposes, we know who we've been reaching out to and who we um, uh, who accepted or who maybe rejected us, uh, et cetera. Um, as far as, okay, so there we go. So, 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 so there's your marching orders. So go ahead and start this. Again, I, I strongly suggest trying to call first. Um, when we did this in the spring, we were still in the midst of the, the, the pandemic. People hadn't gotten their vaccinations. Many of these offices were still remote. So in some cases, we left messages on answer machines where people were not in the office to, to respond to those messages. Um, we still have the pandemic burning across much of the planet. We are in no way, shape, or form done with this pandemic. But some areas in the U.S. are, are you know, recovering a bit now relative to uh, several months ago. Um, and so, uh, so, we, so we think we might have some better responses now in the fall. Um, so we do want to still reach out. If you try and call this phone number and just get you know, no answer or an answer machine, nobody calls you back then, you know, after a day or so, try it again. If still no response, then go ahead and try um, another, uh, another number. Um, we've had good success. Uh, you know, first, just try to Google the, the county name, whatever. But in some cases, those websites were created in 19, you know, 91, and they haven't been updated since 2001 or something. So um, sometimes you have to try other sources. Sometimes these smaller jurisdictions don't have a really um, public-facing um, communication strategy, hard to figure out who to talk to. So in that case, I would try reaching out to someone to try try uh, searching for a news article about them and see what the person's name is and, and, and search that person's contact. Um, you could try searching for, for example, the mayor or the county supervisors 
reach out to those folks and then say, hey, I'm looking for someone who's working on coastal beach issues, et cetera. Which agency, which person is the one I should talk to? Um, uh, yeah, so I'll say that. So we had, a, we had a long discussion in class today about different strategies, but that, that's the big point. Before we go, I want to take just a, a quick tour of the survey itself. So it's relatively brief. <clears throat> There's some introductory stuff. Varies a little bit, again, if you're doing the phone version or the email version. Phone version, you would say your name since you're the recorder and a few other things. But after some demographic stuff, what country do you, uh, what, what county do you live in, et cetera, tell me about what kind of agency you work for, et cetera, um, uh, we then get into the first real questions. And so how this guy works is there's some uh, preamble, hey, so when COVID first began, blah, 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 blah. And then we ask them, hey, how would you characterize the strength of your county's restrictions to coastal access? And we have a couple different points here. Winter, spring, uh, and this is all of 2020, winter 2020, spring of 2020, summer of 2020, fall of 2020, or this past winter. So we're just looking really at the first year of the pandemic um, when things were the most uh, crazy in terms of restrictions. So... Uh, they could say that, yeah, we didn't have any restrictions on our, our beach and coastal access. We had complete uh, closure and, and, and shutdown. Nobody could use it. Or we had some mild or relatively strong um, restrictions. Um, so you're going to tick, you know, or they, you or they will tick one of these for each row. And then we also have some questions that ask about specific time windows that are a lot of times easier for people to recall. Hey, what about your spring break? What about... Memorial Day weekend, what about uh, July 4th weekend, et cetera. Um, and then we just go through and ask some of these questions and, and we ask a few different things. Then we have some questions that are, um, you know, tick all of the above. So, you know, in this case, what kind of restrictions did you employ? Uh, you know, no gathering small groups. So they can they, they select all of these or none of these. And they can also add in some other things that they did that, that aren't articulated here. Again, more of these questions, et cetera. And then um, we close out with a really important question, which is, um, uh, what is your impression of the public's interest in visiting and using beaches? Now, the important thing to say here is, um, this is, uh, you know, so theoretically we could have an army of people and somehow go through all the local newspapers and maybe sorta, kinda, maybe piece together kinda what some of the restrictions were in, these, in at least some of these counties. This is an example of something only these folks in these agencies can tell us. And so that is, um, did people's interest decline over time in, in, uh, in the coast? Did people's interest uh, increase over time? Or is it roughly the same? So if they say things like, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if it's really changed at all. I, I just don't know. That tells me that there isn't a strong increase or decrease. And I would uh, just select, uh, it's more or less constant. Um, uh, and then we have an, an open-ended thing at the end of this. Hey, if you want to tell us anything about the pandemic in, in the coast, feel free to, to, to give us any other detail. Elaborate on one of the, your responses or tell us something else that we didn't capture or something you were really proud of or, or noted. Um, people are welcome to do that, but no one has to provide an open-ended response. And then just to close out, uh, also with regards to wording here, um, we have had some issues in some areas where where it's a coastal county and we ask these questions, but we keep saying things like beaches and the coast or something. Sometimes these terms, depending on where we are talking about in the nation, um, uh, confuse people. Or they'll, they'll, we've had several people say, oh, no, we're, we, don't, we don't have any coast. We don't have any beaches. And we're like, wait a second, but you're a coastal county. Like, oh, all we have is estuary or all we have is cliff. We don't have any sand. Um, we are using beach as a shorthand for the coast broadly writ. For most people, that will be a sandy beach, but but um, you know, go ahead and adapt the language uh, as to what they are familiar with. Again, this is why this the cell phone doing the survey over the phone is better because you can sort of cut that off. We do find that some people that don't want to do the survey they hear the word beach and they go, oh, we don't have any beach, so I'm not going to done the, not do this. This isn't that doesn't apply to me. It actually does. Um, so the email is more likely to get that happen, right? When they start going to question number two or three and they go, oh, you know, and they stop answering. So um, yeah, that's our instrument. Uh, it's pretty fast. Uh, have a look over it. Make sure you're comfortable with it before, we, um, before you send it out, either uh, asking orally or in written form. Again, everybody has six targets. 
and uh, and you need to uh, love to do six, but you only need to get responses from two. Please start this now. Start today. Start reaching out. Start start emailing. Start calling, um, uh, because you don't want to wait till the last minute to try to do this. You have while other aspects are are, are quiz etc. is due uh, our Friday uh, end of the week normal time. However, for this assignment, you actually have a week and a half. So you have till uh, two Fridays from now to complete this. So I won't be sentencing stuff until October 8th. Um, remember that when you do get a survey, response, uh, survey completed, go ahead and fill this out. Now, if you're doing the cell phone-based survey, you will know because you're, you're, you're talking to these folks, you're writing the information down, you know they've gone through the, the survey. However, if, you, if they ask for an email or say, hey, I want to do this on my own. Can you send it to me? I'll fill it out tonight. Um, and you send them the email or if you're just sort of cold sending the email, uh, the invitation to do the survey to the, to the um, agency, which probably is not the best move. But, you know, if you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Um, but you might not know because qual you won't be able to tell if the Qualtrics email su uh, survey has been filled out. I will be checking every day or so and I will update you if I see that... Um, you know, the survey from Yakima County, Washington has been completed. I will send you a quick note, just let you know that that's been, that's been done. So that's our survey. Uh, uh, have a look at it. Keep updating this. I'm um, looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys find. And again, once we have this, we will be able to um, have a more robust part two of this lab when we're looking at the distribution and the efficacy um, and how we responded to the stressor of uh, beach closures under COVID. Um, uh, as we go forward. So thanks you guys. Talk to you soon. Have a great rest of your week and stay safe.